Welcome back to the LCS Countdown, where we're gearing up for game one of the day. Quick reminder of how the teams are stacked up. Very little is set in stone, with teams still duking it out for playoff positioning. And while the regular season veers itself to the end, let's check in on the road to finals, presented by Rocket Mortgage. Now, on the path to Detroit, the first three teams to make the race to Little Caesars Arena are assumed to be Team Liquid, Cloud9, and CLG. And so with that assumption, Jats return to the scene. The rest of us on the desk are going to try and sell you on the perfect set of wheels, all right, to take that fourth and final spot in Detroit. Now, this might seem unfair, all right, okay. but uh, I'm the host, so it, it goes <laughs> the way I say it does. I'm going to come out the gate hot with the best deal on four wheels. It's the Optic Mobile, my friend. <laughs> now, what you have is a crowning achievement in roster engineering, a compact ride with big attitude that's quick uh, like an arrow. And with this ride, you know what you're going to get. Doesn't matter what the jungle of the freeways hold. It can navigate mid to late game decision making with ease. And just when you think you know this machine inside and out, they pick up speed and blaze themselves to a 2-0 weekend making Far more expensive models pale in comparison. So if you want to make it to old Detroit, you better bet on old reliable and optic. I mean, I imagine their early game was good back in like the 80s, wherever that car was from. <laughs> That's a classic. You, I don't think you ever been to a car show, up. my friend? Based on what they're you doing. You roll up in this lime green so beauty. You guys already picked the People TL, gonna hear C9, the and COG yeah. mobiles. And I need to find. Yeah, we're in those three. We're trying to find. What else you sell me? All right. You know you're gonna pass on this so quickly. Look at that. The optic coupe. You know how many coupe versions there were of optic made? It's one. There was one, and it's that one. It's time to move on. Here's some other pictures. You don't buy the first car on the lot. That's fair. That's fair. I'll let you see the rest of the car. I forgot my greasy mustache. I meant to print one. Oh, there it is. I'm already sold. I'm already sold. Moving on from you. That's all fine. But Jet, you strike me as the kind of person who cares about the finer things. Go nice to a ride. So I'm going Bumblebee. with the best in class solo laners available Woo! with a guaranteed limited 20 CSD at 15 warranty. It's got front wheel drive, and the back wheels do need to get rotated out at least once a split. <laughs> uh, the tread wears thin pretty quickly, but that's a small price to pay for the yeah. horsepower in the solo laners. Uh, you just gotta quickly, you know, move on past what the, might be happening in the back wheels and the bot. But other than that, uh, you know, those top laners, it's a joy to ride with them. I mean, it's cheaper. It's tempting. I, I, I'm still. I, that looks like a, almost a rear wheel drive model right there. And and that's the point. If it's a rear wheel drive. Model, I don't know what solo lane be. drive versus bot lane drive is. Yeah, uh, front wheel. The front jungle front has wheel. some transmission Again, problems. Yeah. Oh, but. reliable. Or tire changes every three months, Jack. Until I see Keith with this some solid gonna... back tires on that well, one. Okay, what do you got for me, Chris? Listen, Jack, you you seem like the kind of guy that likes to have a ton of options. Let me show I do you. Like the hundred these right here. We've got hundreds hundred of features. Hundred a hundred of these features, customizable. You've got windows. You've got cup holders. Whatever you need. One of the back tires of this baby has won world's best tire three times in a row. <laughs> that I do. <laughs> On top of that, this is a German-inspired engine. So the engine is in the front, therefore it is a top-heavy car. But fear not, because this drives like a German vehicle. We got a German driver to go oh. with you, which guarantees late game efficiency. I it's didn't know drivers you. came with the cars. Well, you can always throw things Mine's in got if you're nav. trying to be a good It's sales. got jungle yeah. navigation. I mean, the pitch started out weak, but it looks like it's been tuned up recently. It absolutely has yeah. been. I mean, this car has really ramps up. The more you give it, the more it gives back to you. More recently in the shop, it is the most expensive car it's on the lot. It's interesting. Like, I feel yeah. like, so you, you've taken TL, C9, and CLG from I really feel like you're not showing me like the actual really nice car. <laughs> what are you talking what are you about? about? This is everything. You know, yeah, my memory tells These me something. These are the only three options. That that's the one that I think I want. You, you want guys, that uh, piece of junk? No. Yeah. You want it's that? The most expensive. That thing barely functions. It's, I feel like that thing has probably been to no. more finals. That thing's been struggling to things. find its identity all year long. It, it, it always been, like, lets you down at the end. A right. little shaky at first, but I'm sure like, like the engine in the middle of that car Here's the deal. is it, very expensive. It'll get you, it'll get you to Detroit, but engine. you probably ain't getting back in it. If that's you all want I'm a front engine, look at my the engine on the hundred thieves car. It sticks out way more. 
more. Look at the power. Listen, you can I, clearly see. Look, I've been lime, here lime, a while. lime green or nothing, my friend. Yeah, I'm going black and white. He's going TSM. <laughs> black TSM. and white. Well, there you have it. Thank Game you. time shaking out in just about three and a half minutes. Let's go ahead and get some predictions for the day. Before we jump into your thoughts, I decided to test your prediction skills in a game of chance. Let's take a look. Alrighty, so for today's prediction game, we're gonna have Dash throwing darts at balloons filled with confetti. All the balloons are black, so he doesn't know which game he's actually trying to predict, so it's pretty much random, but we just wanna watch James fail at throwing darts. What? Right in the middle, what happens? Uh, you, you, no, the you, you, you. The League of Legends draw will occur. You today. keep throwing. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna, there Yay! we go. Woo! Najee, which one do you think is Cloud9? Because that's who I think is going to win the game. So two of them are Cloud9. Which ones am I aiming for? Always on top. Always on top. That's Always damn right, baby. Here we go. The top balloon. Ah, oh, oh, that was not, close. Try not to miss. We're running out. Your worst shot. You know yet. what? I'm trying to. Should yeah, we I just? I want to get in the way of his arm. You said the cord was the line. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just as long as that's the cord is the line. line. This looks. This feels fair to me. I still miss. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Top balloon. Top balloon. Baby. Top balloon. Yeah! Hey, it's Cloud9! I think 100 Thieves will win this game. So you game. want you want red? I want red, is what we're was what we're hoping for with uh, with this. And so I'm going uh, bottom left, because I think they're throwing me a curveball here. Oh my goodness. You're getting worse. I am getting worse. There we go. Hey! I got what I wanted! 100 Thieves! TSM Echo Fox. So are all four of the balloons TSM balloons then? Or what are we doing? Because if I accidentally pick Echo Fox, I'm going to feel real bad. Oh, thank you. <laughs> TSM! Hey. Woo! One is CG, the other one is CG, but with an L. You have to Takes find the, the L. Find the L. God, what would I do without you? <laughs> no! Oh. Oh. Damn you, Mark Z! Are they all? And your dumb rules. Are they all? Are they all clutch gaming? Clutch? Oh, no, okay, yeah. Well, there you have it. I'm confident in, in three out of my five. <laughs> That's not bad. That's about what you guys normally get, so. I right, was three out of five. I had a great comeback. They just cut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I sure did. Okay. Very quick. I remember it. It stuck with me. It was yeah. burned into my brain from that yeah. moment. All right, let's take a look at your guys' predictions and how okay. they would pair up against. Oh. The exact the same. Did the, the dart said something different? The dart though. said differently. So the darts chose optic in game one and clutch in game five, but it did as well pick uh, C9, hundred thieves, and Man, TSM. Jet hasn't got a yeah. game right all split. Uh, or wrong, Mark. <laughs> Man, all yeah. week. <laughs> looking at reasons for Optic to beat Team Liquid, but I just couldn't find any. Yeah. The 7-0 really? record is just... But uh, we went through so many of the reasons why they sh could beat sure, TL sure. earlier in the show. Yeah. But you think just the historical it's numbers... Historical just numbers, spacking. and then the last time they met, they it was just a disaster of a match that was supposed to be a really hype one that let me down. All right, well, look, Optic Gaming, 7-0 is what they're staring down the barrel of. Let's see if they can make it 7-1 as we throw it out to the Battle Arena for the call. Thank you very much, gentlemen. My name is Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns. I am joined once more by one of my favorite compatriots here at the casting desk, Mr. Sam Kobe Hartman Kinsler. We're going to be bringing you the first three games here today. Kobe, how are you doing, my friend? Pretty good. Uh, one of the favorites. I would like to be number one. It's either I'm first or I'm last, Captain Flowers. That's <laughs> one way to live your life. Second place is not a medal you're looking to get. That, how does that work out for your TFT climbing, though? Because that's a rough strategy. Well, currently, I'm last because I am not first. Okay. But Team Liquid. That's unfortunate. Team Liquid are indeed your first place North American LCS team in large part due to the players you're seeing on screen right now. Ezreal going to be the first ban here, trying to take away possible safe bottom lane from the Optic Gaming side, whose bottom lane, I believe, has been performing a lot better and has been a huge part of the success that Optic has had in summer. Well, Optic is not going to allow those enchanters into the roster of Team Liquid this time around. Last week, we got to see kind of what Team Liquid can do when given some of those perma bans like Karma and Yumi. And in case you missed some of that action, well, it's not exactly pretty to watch. A couple carries with a big front line and some enchanters makes Team Liquid a scary adversary indeed. So that's not going to happen this time around. Sejuani banned out by TL, keeping one of those top tier jungle picks away. Doing the same thing again here, getting rid of the Silas. Silas was so big for Optic last weekend. Meteos had an all-star performance on that champion. And in 914, did get some additional changes. You know, some nerfs to the cooldown of the ultimate. A lot of things moved around. 
Uh, shield going to be magic shield now. But regardless, uh, a lot of people still think the champion extremely strong, both from the jungle role and as a mid lane pick. Uh, you know, make, getting a lot of use still out of the magic damage shield. Not going to be the case here, though. Rakan banned away, Ooh. and the hover on Yumi already. I'm actually kind of surprised to see the Rakan banned out over the Yumi. I mentioned how we got to see Team Liquid play some of these powerful shielding and healing champions and how good the team looked on them. And once again, Core JJ is going to be playing the Yumi. After the last game where he played it, he made a tweet that said, give me the cat more. <laughs> he wants to play this champion, and we'll see how well he can pop off with it because Optic Gaming have locked in some fighters here. We got the Draven and the Jarvan picked up first rotation. And remember, this is 914 Yumi 2, so one of the reasons it could get let through, some of the damage taken down, some of the mana was hit as well. So we'll see if Core JJ can have the same sort of damage output on this champion in a little bit weaker state. Heading against Draven is always a scary thing for the bottom side. A lot of people like to go for early kills down there, and Jarvan is definitely a champion that can get there. Well, Doublelift fans should be happy to see him on a champion with some serious outplay potential here in the Lucian. Nothing better than seeing one of the best AD carries in the region, playing such a flashy, dashy, all around just cool champion, as opposed to a Sona. So, seeing that bottom lane coming out from Team Liquid against a Draven lane from Optic should be plenty going on here in that bottom half of the map early on. And once again, a Rocks, just a staple of competitive play for so long. <laughs> Remember, 9.14 means that the ultimate can no longer revive under any circumstance. That is gone, and I'm curious how that'll impact his pro play dominance. That's true. A lot of the top players I've been talking to has said that he doesn't have to revive anymore, though. <laughs> he did also get a little increase on the self-healing when you pop your ultimate and everybody's still pretty confident in the team fighting that Aatrox does bring. This has also been one of Impact's best champions. Mm -hmm. uh, he has performed on quite a few different carry champions, but Aatrox is definitely kind of at the core of a couple of the Team Liquid compositions. I'm excited to see what they do go for as far as a jungler too, because already they're looking fairly aggressive. The Lucian Yumi lane is extremely mobile uh, and definitely has a lot of potential, but uh, Nautilus and Draven is now locked in. Yep. With the Nautilus counterpick uh, with Draven damage, it's very clear, right? You Nautilus yeah. go in, you're trying to go in with your Aftershock, you try uh, and just outstat them, force the two versus two fight, uh, and have more damage with your Draven, more tankiness with your Nautilus. Well, Optic Gaming know what their opponent's bottom and top lanes are. So this time, it looks like they're going to be targeting the jungle pool, removing that Skarner. We've seen Xsmithy prove himself as the best Skarner in the LCS multiple times with this champion. So that one's not allowed this time in. Trundle also banned away. So you were talking about the Aftershock on the Nautilus. They want to make sure there's nothing there to eat those stats and become that huge front line there for the side of TL. Exactly. It's very clear what Optic's strategy is in this game already. Uh, they've got super hard dive here, locked in with Jarvan and Nautilus to try and force fights with the Draven there uh, for backline. See what they can get for Crown, because Crown has really been one of the determining factors of what uh, the overall composition will look like for this team. Mm -hmm. Whether he's going for a split push style to try and create things for himself on the side lanes, or if he's going to be a DPS for the team fights in the backline. And there's your answer. It will be one of the standard DPS that we have for mid lane right now. Corky and Azir, extremely popular trades. Ooh, but okay. Team Liquid won't make that trade. Team Liquid decide they're not going to answer Corky with Azir. Put your resident sleepers away. <laughs> it's Yasuo Gragas for TL. This is so fun to watch. We've seen it happen before. Last time, I believe they had the Yasuo in the hands of Jensen, and X Smithy uh, was able to go mid over and over over again, if you have this ranged knockup of the Gragas ultimate, it's very easy for a Yasuo and a Gragas to combine for even ranged kills. You can find a 2v1 just separating the enemy jungler and uh, mid laner themselves and look to burst kill one of the two. Definitely an effective strategy versus a team uh, if you're really trying to target that mid lane. The one thing I'm looking at here in this composition from Team Liquid is a lot of physical damage. Yes, you're going to have some AP coming in from the Gragas, mm -hmm. but that's not enough to really 100 to 0 somebody on your own unless you've just completely decimated the game to begin with. So the tanky lineup of Optic Gaming will be able to effectively itemize against the TL picks. Yeah, and we have the last pick of the Poppy coming in for Dokla. It's one of Dokla's original super strong champions for the team. They got a lot of wins when they put him on 
on this tank in the top side. And they didn't give a lot of resources to Dokla early on in the game, but later on he was able to team fight very effectively. And one of the biggest changes for an individual champion, uh, for me at least looking at them for 914, is Poppy's Steadfast Presence now will ground you after it blocks a dash. Uh, so it's actually insane. You can't flash after that. You're also incredibly slow. We'll see how well he's able to deny some of these members in the team fights. That counts. Gragas, that counts. Aatrox, that counts. Yasuo, it's, there's so many champions that Poppy can uh, deny here as far as the mobility. I looked at those Poppy changes and I saw a region that realized we have a lot of Riven one tricks and not enough of other <laughs> kinds of one tricks because that pretty much seemed like the the biggest Riven shutdown button to me and champions like Yasuo and Aatrox that have the ability to move around so frequently, well, like you said, that grounding effect does wonders at making them so much more easy to deal with. And I want to see if Optic can put themselves in a spot where they're not just going to get caught out and instantly blown up by this knockup combo you're talking about. Exactly. And grounding, by the way, the terminology just means uh, they won't be able to flash out of it. They're also slowed by 25% for two seconds. No flashing out and no other movement skills. There you go. All right, let's see what else they can get here in the mid lane. Eh, doesn't look like we're going to see something too spicy here at the start. I don't think anybody wants to risk a whole lot here before the minions even arrive them themselves onto the map. Team Liquid 11 and 3. They've proved constantly throughout this split why they are at the top of the table. Optic. Sort of a surprise contender over the course of summer 2019 here. Nobody was expecting this team to come out the gate 4-0 and zero like they did. Struggled a little bit in a couple weeks after that, but have managed to maintain this playoff positioning throughout the entirety of the split, and it's honestly been pretty impressive to see. Yeah, last weekend was a 2-0 weekend for OpTic. Meteos had that really strong game on the Silas. Now he's getting the leash on blue side for Jarvan, so he's probably going to rush to uh, the level 3 plus double buffs. Big heads into lane and double lift, able to dodge out on the first hook. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on this Yumi, by the way, as far as the lower damage on 914, the more difficult mana regeneration. So far, though, working out quite well as he's able to land the prowling projectile there. Also notice how he's constantly jumping back and forth to his AD carry. For people out there who are not experienced with Yumi's, or at least with good Yumi's, Early on, those auto attacks make a whole lot of difference in weaving your way in and out of those 2v2s to make sure you're actually a presence in the lane and not just AFKing on the AD carry and then playing with your feet on the mouse and keyboard instead. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. You got to make sure you're actually involved. Until later on, at least, when you're going to be jumping around to everybody in those team fights, sometimes the cat just has to make her own way in the lane. But looking at mid lane here, Jensen versus Crown. The Yasuo dashing and slashing forward, but Crown's got the level advantage, and he'll continue to maintain this momentum. Yeah, you were talking about Core JJ jumping off and on to uh, double lift. The other reason that Yumi's did that in lane was to get the mana back there with your passive, uh, with the auto attack, and that was the part that I was referring to that got removed as far as making it more difficult for her to keep up the mana. Meanwhile, Jensen here in the mid lane. That's where we're expecting a decent amount of focus from Team Liquid. Whenever you have the Gragas and the Yasuo, mm -hmm. a very common for uh, the Gragas to try and get both control around the mid lane for the Yasuo, as well as use your early Predators and your early Summoner spells there to get the advantage. Well, we saw Team Liquid ping on this bottom side Scuttle Crab here. Both teams are aware of the positioning of it. Both teams' junglers are nearby. The difference here is that Team Liquid has complete priority and control over the bottom side of the map. There is no way for Optic to contest it. Free Crab, for example. Yep, he's able to get that. Always nice when you have your laner uh, pushing up for the Scuttle Crab that you're trying to go get. And you can see, once Meteos knows that the bottom Scuttle Crab has been taken by Team Liquid and X Smithy. He immediately heads to the top one here. Uh, so he's going to trade them and not let Team Liquid get both of those Scuttle Crabs in the river. He should be uncontested there. This does mean, though, that we have the recall from X Smithy. So Gragas now has those boots in inventory, you can see. And he might head towards mid lane right now. Uh, you can use your first Predator on one of these solo lanes to try and get the early presence felt. That being said, Crown is very close to the turret, and he's on Corky, so it's not like Xmithy has any chance to really make a big play happen here just yet. You saw Xmithy roll the barrel over the wall, looking towards the enemy Ooh. chicken camp, but topside, Impact looking for that solo kill onto Dokla. Flash away will keep the Optic top laner alive. Yeah, you can see Impact playing really well around that Steadfast Presence, not grounding himself, not making that mistake. 
and uh, getting locked down, then forcing the flash from Dokla. You have to be, it's a very quick game here where you're trying to uh, use the steadfast presence during a dash to guarantee that you're able to knock them down. Back in the bottom side, it's continuing to just be the double lift game as he and Core JJ will continue applying Ooh. this pressure to Arrow and Big. And you named what this composition from Arrow and Big was trying to do with Draven and Nautilus and going all in and just 2v2 straight up fighting, but it's not working so far. Mid lane here, Meteos and Crown trying to make the moves on to Jensen, but he'll get away with the flash. Slick move there by Jensen. You see him walk back so that he can then E through the Jarvan to gain some distance. Still an effective gank from Meteos though, as he burns the mid lane flash and now is headed towards bottom side. Very easy communication from Team Liquid though. They're saying, hey, Meteos just ganked mid. We lost our presence here. He very well could be going bottom. Smithy now does get eyeballs on the enemy jungler. Smithy finding Meteos there, <laughs> trading back and forth for the tiny chickens, but the big chicken goes the way of X Smithy. Impact and Dokla will again continue fighting up here. Impact tries to land Q3, not going to get much damage with it here just yet. Dokla content to allow Impact to maintain lane control for now. All he needs to do is farm those minions up. Yep, Impact doing very well so far on the Aatrox, able to push in. Meanwhile, another visit towards mid. We do have the deep wards here that saw X Smithy in the area, so it should be fairly easy for. Uh, Optic and Meteos to try and avoid this early invade. Poor JJ goes in and lays down the control ward, though, for some deeper vision to try and keep track of Jarvan, make sure he doesn't affect the lanes on this side of the map. Meanwhile, another turret plate being whittled away here. Double Lift is able to get the first one for himself. And already you can see that gold starting to stack up. 400 lead for Double Lift over Arrow in this bottom side. Yumi Lucian. Those Yumi nerfs not hitting the laning phase too hard here this game, but <laughs> also got to point out what I said earlier, Big and Arrow haven't found any of these dredge lines. The reason they picked this composition was to go all in on these guys, and it's just not working out so far. Yeah, if you don't get the all-ins, especially if you don't have jungle pressure to really back up that threat, and it's very difficult. Impact has a lot of pressure, though. Impact managing to get the knock up on Dokla while he was still in range of the chains, guaranteeing the pullback on them. Make sure he comes out on top in that trade. Optics top laner still hanging on in farm. The bottom side is going to be 2v2 here yet again. Both sides still level five for both players, meaning we're not going to see the ultimates coming out just yet here. Meteos also hanging around just in case, but it doesn't look like Team Liquid's going to give them the opportunity to make a play there. You can see plenty of vision in this bottom part of the jungle here for Optic Gaming. Their own oh, control predator. is down, but now it's Predator coming into the mid lane from X Smithy. Maybe he can set something up here on the Kragas. <laughs> Crown goes over the wall. Yep. There he is, X Smithy going for the body slam. Does manage to get the knock up, but Jensen's not in range, so they won't go any further. So that was interesting mind game right there. You think after the body slam hits it, maybe it's an instant ultimate? But it can also be a mind game trying to get the flash out of your opponent for free, having them spam it, come out of it. In the end, there's just no action there, no ultimate use, no summoner spell use. So I think that's quite good for Crown, who had just Valkyried into the brush right next to X Smithy and avoided possible very dangerous gank there. So yeah, I feel like any day you can Valk into the enemy jungler <laughs> and walk away without popping your flash is a pretty good one there okay. for any mid laner. But Xmithy now sees his opportunity to once again make some plays off of the pressure that his bottom lane has bought for the side of Team Liquid. Core JJ and Double Lift rotate over to help him, and that will be an early Infernal Drake picked up for the side of TL. No contest here from Optic Game. Dad talked about it a little bit on the analyst desk, but this Team Liquid, this version, has been very strong in the early game. And once again, some early game control here resulting from the double lift and core JJ bottom lane. They're going all the way Speaking in there. Big and arrow trying to make those moves happen. Double is going to be taken down very low. Here comes the package delivery system. Crown's got him. And core JJ oh, is on the win. Crown trying to find one more attack. He's got that one too. A double kill for the mid laner of Optic Gaming. Big roam from Crown down to the bottom side of the map. I mean, Arrow and Big are like, if the jungler's not gonna make the successful gank, let's have Crown come do it. And they find that engage. This is what we have been hyping up for the Nautilus and Draven lane. Now that they're level sixes, they're able to get the ultimate. And Yumi actually pops off, gets hit with the knockup. Good flash from Big to get that root onto double lift. Afterwards, 
Crown coming down with the package allows him to make that extra distance for the tower dive. Him still having Valk and Flash after that to be able to get out from under the turret and picking up the second kill is huge for Optic. Getting right back into this game. And that's the importance of him not having to use the Flash in mid lane as well. That's him losing his life in bottom lane if the Flash wasn't available. It's all working out here for Optic Gaming. But of course, the advantages Team Liquid has earned themselves so far in the game through farm and through plates means the gold is still very even between these squads. Big trying to make another play here into the bottom lane. Oh. Once again, gonna be in some trouble. It's Meteos with the Wombo combo. And Optic has double lift number. And it's Draven that gets the kill this time. Arrow gets the cash in. That is gonna be so big. The bottom lane for Team Liquid had complete control for the first, what, seven minutes of this game, resulting in the Infernal Drake, but Big and Arrow now, with a little bit of help from the rest of the team, are absolutely steam rolling ahead. When we saw the graphic, Doublelift was up 400 gold over his <laughs> opponent in Arrow. Look at the gold now. Arrow is up 1,000 because of the power of the Draven Pass. And we talked a little bit about it in the intro for this game. The bottom lane for Optic has been one of the big improvements that they have had in a lot of their success. Now they're, they're going, going in again! again. Meteos is setting this up so well, but Double is able to turn it around, find himself at least one in retaliation. It's going to be a one-for-one one trade. But when you lose your jungler and take out the enemy AD carry, you're still feeling all right. Shelly summoned up here in the top side. Dokla's trying to defend, maybe turn this one around. He's able to slam them both away with the Keeper's Verdict. But Shelly will put the last couple of attacks into that tier one turret. It's first turret over to TL. Yeah, nice little moves there from Dokla. Very experienced Poppy player. Immediately charges the enemy jungler into the wall to get the stun. He takes down Nick Smithy to 50% health and is able to eject both uh, possible gankers here. Let's take another look at the bottom side, though. This was the flash from Arrow. Stand aside, my friend. Big is able to follow that CC up. And that is just successful repeat gank. Arrow knows that with the flash advantage, he can easily set this one up. He's able to get that lockdown. And then, as you know, they continued it with a second dive from Meteos. So Meteos sacrifices his life, jumping in on Jarvan. This is the full tank Jarvan, you know, sacrificing for the Cataclysm to lock in double lift. You mentioned trying to deny the enemy AD carry CS by trading death chambers basically with them. Right. That also took its toll as the bottom lane turret, you can see only has two plates left on the side of Team Liquid. Those three were all mined in very quick succession by the Optic bottom lane. Let's see, this game is getting very interesting, Captain Flowers. Yes, sir. Optic Gaming really striking hard here in the bottom lane early on. X Smithy tries to make a play mid with the <laughs> ultimate, but a nice Valk from Crown keeps him safe. Horn went out for the homies there. Uh, Smithy <laughs> just leaving that one in front of the tower. And once again, Crown gets away without a flash or any uh, you know long cooldown used either, just the Valkyrie. Crown doing well on this cork. We've seen the man pop up on the champion before. And now Dope is getting himself into those scrappy 1v1s with impact here again. Completed Sunfire Cape means you can't stoppy the poppy. Dokla is not afraid of this 1v1 anymore. Gets the grounding down onto his opponent. Chain's still gonna find Dokla. Picks up the shield, trying to get himself away. Impact has got the better of him now. And the force flash out of Dokla. Pretty fun fight here between the two Titans and Topside. Conquer doing a lot of work there. As soon as that procs for Aatrox, have to worry about the true damage conversion. Optics on the bottom side, though. Double it has to respect this enemy pressure. And Smithy's here to answer. Could be a full on 3v3. They're drawing the turret aggro, though. That's way too far in from Optic. And Team Liquid punish. The defending champions here strike back. They've got the extra wards. And this time around, they've got the extra players as well. Impact and X Smithy come down to defend their bottom lane, and it is successful in time for a dragon as well. That play, the repercussions are going to be a little bit bigger as not only do Double F and Core JJ answer back uh, with a little bit of money just in time before turret plays drop for themselves, but it is also the Cloud Drake. That play felt so forced, so panicked. They wanted to wait a little bit of extra time to take down the turret, but when Team Liquid didn't allow them to have it, it all went south. Yeah, they've got the extra vision here, and the tower with Two more auto attacks would have gone down, but the teleport completes for them. Then Dokla's left under the tower, so it's actually two kills that go over to Team Liquid. They're at it again! They're not stopping yet. Package delivery is down. Double up some trouble over the wall goes Meteos, and there's your loot pinata with it. Another double for Arrow.
Ain't no party like a bot lane party, Captain Flowers. Because a bot lane party don't stop. And when Optic's in the game, and Jensen's having to flash himself into the Cataclysm. A nice follow oh! there from him. But Jensen with the last breath over the wall. Crowd's still looking to take him down. A couple more hits might be able to do it, but he won't be able to go all the way underneath the turret. The rocket just barely sends Jensen hobbling away. Who said uh, Corky's a resident sleeper champion, my friend? <laughs> Not when you're Falcon and invading the enemy jungler right into danger. Nice little trade there of summoner spells as well as ultimates. Smithy does actually pop his predator, uh, getting back to try and defend that tower. They don't want to let the second one go down. Level 12 impact to level 10 Dokla. Very different results when they both teleported into the bottom lane. Dokla just gifting away a free 300 gold prize pool while impact was able to go down there, grab himself some XP, turn things around. Doka needs a little bit of catching up to do, but he's still going to be useful on this champion. Pure tanks operate on a lower econ than bruisers or fighters do, so as long as he can keep stacking that armor, Poppy's going to be just fine. And that play on the bottom side, which we're talking about because there were so many rewards for Team Liquid coming out the victor in the bottom lane double teleports, was set up because Team Liquid had the advanced vision. They had a deep reward over by Tribush that saw Meteos before their control ward saw him which was when Optic knew that they, uh, the plan was up. And so Team Liquid got their countermeasures in place that much quicker. And, you know, a couple seconds in a play like that means everything. An absolutely incredible 2,500 gold lead for impact over Dokla right now in the state of this game means Team Liquid has to be very careful about any fights that don't have impact in them. When the gold is this close and so much of it is a top lane difference, the bottom half of the map's got to be careful, man, because otherwise you're just going to see Crown continue to do what he's done so much so far this game. Yeah, I mean, I want to highlight both the bottom side gold differences and then the top side one there. It's a, basically a lopsided map at, the point, at this point because Arrow is so much of Optic's power that they want to play around him. Biggs now finding himself caught out, trying to escape the chains. Nice oh. use of the stopwatch there to stay alive. They're looking to find the counterattack on the impact. Remember, oh, they no right. reset. Big still walks away, and impact is shut down. Oh my goodness, Big walks away after turning back around for the re-engage. That is insane. Optic coming up ahead in that possible tower dive there. And Nick Smithy just pouring another Gragas ultimate out on the floor. Stopwatch is a hell of a drug, Kobe, and it's the <laughs> kind that managed to keep that Nautilus alive in what looked like a doom situation. All right, so let's look how early it is actually used, too, because the root does land, and Vic gets locked up here. Stopwatch now. Then X Smithy comes in. He had probably already pressed, pressed his R and queued it up after his E. So it came out after the stopwatch was already there for Big. Um, and so that's why it splats on the ground, but Big able to walk away too in the end, healing back up as well. And that is so big, because we just talked about how they want to play around Arrow. Arrow there once again, this Draven now rapid fire and BT and the Executioner's calling to cut the healing from the Yumi as well as the Aatrox, as well as the Gragas. So much work going to be done by that item in these fights. And as we're 18 minutes into the game now, we've reached the point where we're going to see bigger conflicts between four or five members at a time. Optic has so many tools to engage with, with the Poppy, with the Jarvan, with the Nautilus. On the side of Team Liquid, you've got Yasuo Gragas, but if that whiffs, as we've seen a lot of these Gragas ultimates do this game, you don't have nearly as much ready to go. Definitely true, and we can see by the state of the map. Top side is ruled by Team Liquid. Impact pushing that lane all the way up to the tower, but the rest of the map here is controlled by Optic. They've got bottom side, they've got mid lane going here, setting up for the Dragon. This next objective, Infernal Drake number two, is going to be big, and Optic cannot let Team Liquid grab another one. Be looking to see Impact make some big flanks here on this Aatrox. Really put that gold lead to use. Didn't find success with it last time because of big stopwatch, but you only get one of those, so it's not like you can pull off that play here again. Crown armed with package is actually fantastic for Optic with this Drake coming up. Double it with a very nice dodge to get away from a dredge line that certainly would have sealed his fate. As Optic moves Meteos and Crown down to the Drake Pit, they realize they only need these two guys to take it. Package should ward away the threat of Team Liquid trying to collapse or contest this, and that means TL will let the Infernal go. Yep, and remember, as you said, 
without impact. Team Liquid do not want that. Dave by Oh my crown! Over the wall goes Crown. He's not able to steal out the red buff. Instead, he's going to be slammed up into the air, nearly taken down. But instead, stopwatch number two, the bane of Team Liquid's existence this game. Yeah, Optic rolling in with a couple of Rolexes here as both of the stopwatches have huge rewards for them. Big plays back to back. Crown right on in again. Another package straight into enemy territory. And he's able to get that victory in the fight over Jensen. Jensen looked like it was going to turn around, but the entire time, you know, Crown is spamming that stopwatch. That's why he Valkyries in with confidence here. They saw him start up the uh, red buff, and he knows, even though Meteos is going to have to walk around, the stopwatch will buy enough time. So he's spamming it here as soon as he gets out of the ultimate, does get into it. Even they were able to have the uh, Draven ultimate come by, but I think Meteos had pretty much done the work there. That was pretty intense from Optic, but man, do I like watching Crown's Corky. Both <laughs> players are going to sit around, head first, shoot some rockets at some minions underneath the turret, and wait till four items. Not this man, not Crown, flying into enemy faces all day. Every single time the package is up, somebody's going in the ground, and I can't get enough of it. I'm glad that this game is delivering, because in the Beginning of summer, Optic was one of the surprise teams that were tied for first place right up there with Team Liquid and start out so strong. After the, the mid-split slump that they had, people were a little bit worried, but they have come back with a vengeance. Now fighting once again very, very closely here, and now with the advantage over Team Liquid, let's see if they can push it. It's always so hard for teams, especially in North America, to really finish games out versus TL. But right now, they've got plenty of vision over the Baron pit. Crown split pushing on top side with that Corky with his big lead, and a Trinity Force should be able to get it. Double lift pushing up here in the mid lane. Could be caught out. Has to use the flash to get away from the Nautilus ulti coming in. Dokla's made his way into the mid lane now as well. Calling finding its way into Dokla, but the entirety of the spell only takes out about 20% of his health. The Buckler will give him a shield to make up for all of that lost HP. Meanwhile, Crown gets the top side tier one. Optic are going to hold off Team Liquid Aggression for now, but Dokla's once again going to find himself here in a losing fight. Death's dance on impact makes it very hard for Dokla to do any meaningful damage to this Aatrox. Yeah, look at that. There's not one, but two. Double Lift also going the Death's Dance route on the Lucian trying to go for the more 1v9 sustain build. That's because we talked about in Champs like there's so much dive, he wants to be able to survive it. Jensen now in the 1v2. Jensen trying to escape as Meteos and Crown continue forward. Meteos is going all the way in though. Ooh. Red Wall's not blocking a melee attack, buddy. Meteos takes him down. TP for TP gonna be coming in here yet as Impact will now be leading the charge for the side of Team Liquid. A Injected. Keeper's Verdict is gonna separate this fight and Dokla will continue trying to get away. Yeah, all of Optic able to rescue and get everybody out alive. Team Liquid attempted to catch them after the tower dive onto Jensen. But oh, now we're not done yet. Big face checking the brush, trying to find somebody else to lock down over the wall. He goes to looking to find more damage. Nice stop one from McSmithy. <sighs> it goes both ways. Crown's going to find the rocket over the wall as Impact will chase after Crown and Meteos. The knock up into the follow up damage. This one's not saving nobody. Shut down for impact. That was huge for Team Liquid. They didn't want to let Optic get away with all of those kills. And TL get three of them back. You can never count this team out. Team Liquid always find a way to seek out that window and punish when their opponents overcommit. Look at this. Nick Smithy in the brush here. Starts it out. Core JJ jumps on him and immediately starts ulting on the Yumi. They get the kill onto Big. Then the stopwatch actually pays off. So, so big for X Smithy. He ends up living, even though Double Lift gets sniped over the wall by Crown. And then Impact finally is able to finish off some kills. He's been just pushing people around this entire game. Getting a huge lead for himself, but he's finally actually able to cash in this time. Now level 15 on the Aatrox, three items completed. It has been the story of this game, but he is such a big win condition for Team Liquid. His team fighting is going to mean everything. Spirit Visage, the third fully completed item here for Impact as well. Really prioritizing the damage coming out from Crown, who does have the Essence Reaver plus Trinity Force. BF Sword in inventory means Infinity Edge should come online before too much longer. 
Team Liquid will move Doublelift out into the mid lane. Optic recognizing the fact that something's probably up. There's no way Doublelift just runs in front of you like that unless they've got some sort of a plan. So they don't want to try to jump on him here just yet. Crown has package ready to go. Again, this is a huge difference maker oh. in these fights. Crown's looking to play aggressively. Impact trying to find some damage there. Don't put going in. Looking to start the fight off. Over the Team Liquid Big Boy. And they've got him already. Jensen's in some trouble. And Ex Smith, he's already dead. And that Woo! was one hell of a trigger pull. Optic Gaming, five for nothing. Optic just destroyed Team Liquid in the river. What an engage right there. As soon as Impact misses that Q1, they go all in on it. Crown tries to start it up, going through the river, and Dokla gets the charge. Broke charge right into the wall. They basically take out that entire gold lead at the beginning of the fight. 100% to zero, killing off the Aatrox. And now the reward will be Baron. Plus, they get an Infernal Drake on top of it. What a spicy game, Flowers. Crown should be able to solo that objective at the same time. I said it earlier, the amount of engaged potential from all these different champions on Optic is something that the TL composition simply doesn't have. It's Gragas Yasuo or Bust. And Optic busted them real hard. Here's a look at how they pulled off. Crown goes in the bottom side. He has the confidence because he has the package. He knows that he's not really in that much threat. And then Dokla, flash throw charge into the wall, followed up by Meteos, chain CCing impact from 100 to zero, literally. Aatrox is out of the fight. That means Team Liquid have no chance. Crown's package right over the top for massive damage as well. And it is an absolute train here headed for the Team Liquid base. And as we're back to live, that train is going right through mid lane station. Crown, of course, most powerful man on the map, is not here. So Optic will wisely not overplay their hand. They want to make sure they're applying pressure, but not so much the Team Liquid's able to catch out and punish them. It's all about Arrow avoiding these Gragas casts, making sure he doesn't get comboed by x and Jensen. Meteor's coming into the back line here. Some damage coming down. Jensen gonna be in some trouble. There goes your knockup. Nautilus looking to find that one with the Death Charge. Brown has made his way into the fight. Guardian Angel completed on this Corky. Impact is breaking down the base of Optic Gaming. The split push from Aatrox providing the threat. Impact has the inhibitor turret down, and Dokla will be sent back to defend. The rest of Optic has not managed to crack the base of TL, and this is why this is North America's number one team. They're not the ones with Baron, but they're the ones with an entrance into the enemy base. Exactly, they know they can't fight the five on five, so a beautiful disengage from X Smithy's ultimate allows Impact to get all the way up to that inhibitor. Now it is exposed, and they really want to isolate him so they can take advantage of that 1v1 still. Right now, though, you can see the War Mogs that has been completed on Poppy. So Dokla, he has so much armor that he can try uh, and you know deal a bit with Impact in the lane and then back off, hopefully run away to heal back up with War Mogs, defend their structures. Optic looking so good here, though, with a minute and 15 seconds left on the Baron. They're returning to finish the job. We've reached the point of equilibrium between the top laners, where the fighter has Death Dance, the tank has War Mogs. Nobody's probably going to be dying in a 1v1 anytime soon. But a 1v1 is not the name of the game, as Optic will once again pressure onto the Tier 3 turret. Baron alive for 55 more seconds. Minion waves have arrived. Optic don't want to step too far forward. You don't want to give a multi-man Yasuo ult over to Jensen. They've got to be so respectful. They've played well enough to earn this 6,000 gold lead so far. You don't want to throw it away at the steps to the Team Liquid base. But TL is doing a wonderful job on this defense. And this team fight is so different because everyone has flashes up. So X Smithy can't just throw out his ultimate on Gragas because Optic players will flash it. You have to flash that combo. So then it's a much more dangerous all-in commitment of someone else has to flash to get the knockup. Dokla, though, is able to find one. Impact once again getting himself caught out. He was the guy who was keeping Team Liquid in this game, but now he's the guy who's putting him in the wrong spot until Meteos is overextended. The stop one. Oh! Team Liquid has three! That's where you say GG debated at the end there by Impact. It baited me, man. It definitely did. That Impact getting that low causes Meteos to dive into the enemy team. Jensen's able to wind wall, so they deny any follow-up damage onto Impact. He does not go down, and they get the counter kill onto the Optic Jungler. Arrow also followed up, and 
Team Liquid still fighting back here. They get the mid lane turret after their troubles. Let's take another look at it. Impact gets caught. He gets knocked up. He gets knocked down. And they think he's about to die. Everyone grabs around. He saves his flash. He gets the heal from Core JJ. Midos goes in. Nobody's there to follow up. Jensen and the rest of the team were able to focus fire him down. And Arrow, who tried to go deal the last hit, had to step up in front of the rest of his tanks. They did not have their defenses set in place. That was not a structured team fight because it came out so quickly. And Team Liquid find an opening to get right back into it. What a fight for Team Liquid. Optic Gaming licking their wounds. Still no deaths on their mid laner though. Crown, five out of six items completed on this Corky. Infinity Edge now done means this damage is absolutely incredible in the team fights if he's given free firing time. That was the biggest difference between that fight and the one that they won earlier in the jungle. Crown was able to package in, find damage onto anybody he wanted. This time around, the turret in the base was stopping the rest of the team from Optic from going forward. I want to see if they can continue to find these fights in good places because they still have control over the map for now. They're still up about 4,000 gold, and we're going to see Drake spawning in five seconds. And let me draw your eyes, Captain Flowers, to what I talked about before. The flashes change the team fight. In that last Team Liquid victory, they used two critical flashes, Aatrox and the Gragas, which we just highlighted. Meanwhile, Optic on the losing end did not lose their defensive summoner, so they still have all of the options with the flashes now available. And Team Liquid will have to outplay a little bit harder this time around without the surprise factor. Jensen with a Sterex gauge in inventory means he'll be able to go in, survive maybe one more auto attack from the Corky before he explodes, which <laughs> may be enough to get the last breath off. We're not sure. But Optic Gaming still with control over the neutral territories of this map. They're the ones who are always pushed up into Team Liquid's area. You can see the ward line. I think this often tells the story of a game. It's Optic wards in Team Liquid's jungle. Team Liquid just trying to creep out of the base, establish a vision line of their own while respecting that Optic could be around any corner. All right. Baron on the table, Optic establishing vision control. You can see the map now go dark for Team Liquid. And they're on the hunt, trying to get some information for themselves. Impact circling around. Dokla. Here comes Crown. They're able to find Impact out here. Can they burst him down, though? It is a Guardian Angel Aatrox, and Crown's going to be eating so much damage. The Corky's forced to flash away. Medios and Dokla will try to tank, but Optic have engaged on the wrong oh. person. They will lose their jungler. They will lose their support, and they will lose this team fight. The sustain on this champion is just too damn high. Impact fights his way out. Dokla's going to be chased down. That's two for Optic, and the front line will be gone. Not the support, but the top laner instead. It's still a 2-0. For Team Liquid, the damage just isn't there. Yes, Crown has all these items in inventory, but there's no Void Staff, and the magic resistance on impact is too much. And with two down for Optic, they have no frontline. Their support is the only one that can set it up. Is big, 3v5. Wow, that was a lot of damage from a rocket under Core JJ, but is it going to be enough? Optic do not want to give away a Baron and their remaining lives to the side of TL. Baron secured, Team Liquid in control. Impact moving forward. Big Spider-Man's his way out through the jungle he goes. Back to the spawn platform he'll land. And Team Liquid tries to find even more. Brown is exhausted. Guardian Angel proc. Surely the end of the game if the Corky falls. He tries to escape the barrel, but he's shut down. And Impact, you cannot say anyone had more of an impact on this game. The man has been cutting through the optic lines the entire game long. Team Liquid pushing on to the Nexus turrets now, looking to find that damage, finding the initiation. Dokla will defend as much as he can. Shut down over onto Jensen, but Arrow's gone back into the base. There's no damage in the fight, and Team Liquid continue looking for more. Arrow is down, the Nexus turrets are falling. Dokla goes next, and Impact says revive. I don't need no revive. Team Liquid, take down Optic Gaming. What a slugfest. 
Next time some solo queue top laner tells me top's just an island, top is jungle difference, top don't matter, I'm gonna link him that bot. <laughs> That island is popping off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Flowers. That's uh, that's one of those bougie billionaire private islands right there because Impact was the man in control so much of this game. He got caught out the one time by Dokla, the big fight that really gave Optic their first lead. But other than that one point in the game, he was the pop-off artist for his team every single time. Yeah, money invested in Impact was money well spent. In the end, he got caught out once again by Crown and Dokla, but they aren't able to take him down. And especially with the Guardian Angel as well, he turns around, he tries to steal some life back uh, with, the, with the vamp there and is able to sustain long enough for the rest of the team to converge. Aatrox having multiple knockups to set up Yasuo also really helps. They're able to uh, actually make that travel time a lot shorter because yeah. Jensen can just take it from a screen away and they're able to turn that last fight around. What a comeback there for Team Liquid. I mean, Aatrox has healing in the kit, amplified by the ulti, amplified by Spirit Visage, amplified by Death's Dance. <laughs> you either kill him in one second or you ain't gonna kill him. Optic Gaming learned that the hard way, but for more on Team Liquid's victory, Gabby Latigris Devia Allen is standing by with the Team Liquid bot laner. Take it away. I do indeed have the Team Liquid bot laner by my side, double lift after a wonderful victory. Now, first things first, I'm not gonna give it to you easy. Things were a little rocky there at the start of the game. So what changed for you and the rest of the team midway through? Um, we lost the fight and we lost Baron, and then uh, I was like, hey guys, I don't think we win uh, <laughs> these 5v5s. <laughs> like, we should probably uh, play more Envision, um, play a little bit more like crazy, chaotic, like spread out and try to go for their back line. So, uh, obviously, like every team fight before then, and honestly, I was running it down. Like, I think I need to really accept the fact that I was running it pretty hard. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, a few things happened that was pretty unfortunate. You know, the package timing, like, not assaulted me, and, like, that was pretty much no counterplay. And then the map got split on me, and I, I played it pretty bad and died a few times. So I was useless until later in the game, but uh, I don't know. Like, actually, this whole week, we've had these scrims where we were down, like, 15k gold, and we would just come back. So I think we got pretty comfortable being behind and, like, learning how to tool people around. Because, like, in NA, like, no one knows how to close out the game. So, like, honestly, if that was us and we were that ahead, we would have won, right? Like, but... But because uh, Optic played it bad and like we played it really well, we were able to come back. And basically, we just decided, okay, we're only gonna win if we kill Corky. He's like level 18, and we just need to kill him. You know, like he can't be doing free damage in fights. That was kind of our plan. Well, based on your answer there, and in the past, it's no secret that you're, let's say, critical of other teams and including yourself. So, with the state of Team Liquid right now, after that performance, having secured that playoff position last week, how would you describe your overall feeling with your roster and the level of confidence? Um, I mean, I feel really confident. I feel like one aspect of a team that's really undervalued these days is the ability to come back. Usually, people only think about Snowball. Like, because of G2 and like everyone's eyes are on G2, they think like, you know, the main aspect of a team that the, the main important thing of a, like a strong team is their ability to get ahead and then crush the game real fast. That's never really been our thing. We play a controlled game and we, we try to make calculated decisions. If we tried to copy G2, we never would, would get that to, to, to their level, I guess. So I'm really confident in my team because I think we've accepted our style and we've kind of, uh, I don't know, we just have a lot of confidence in each other. Like at no point during this game, like I feel like no one got tilted even though I was, you know, like 0-3 or something. So it was, it was pretty good. My last question for you, in the past split, sometimes Team Liquid eases up a little bit within these last couple of weeks. So going into the last week of the regular portion, are we gonna get that kind of lean back or are you gonna go hardcore with your last few matches? Um, I think to clinch first, all we have to do is beat Cloud9 tomorrow. We're sitting right there, but that's not too hard. So um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that We'll clinch first, and then we can kind of uh, experiment a lot more in the rest of the season. There's not really not much left. You know, it's only two games, so. Gotcha. Well, it's very clear that Team Liquid have their eyes on the playoff prize, but that did not stop them from putting a show on for us today. For more on that match, let's send it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Latigris. Double lift, very pumped on that comeback victory over Optic Gaming. We had said the historic scoreline between the teams was 7-0. This was Optic's shot to turn that around and get a victory. I thought they were going to do so it, Crumbs. I thought close. the darts almost predicted They almost had it. I was almost brilliant. What happened? They took a fight without Corky. 
They went down mid and fought without the guy that was 6-0-6, the most powerful carry. You heard Doubler saying the only threat really was the Corky late game. The Draven is not as powerful as you might imagine. He's, his range and his positioning is not the greatest as a damage dealer. And we'll get a look at that fight. Uh, I do want to talk about the early game. Double yeah. F mentioned it, down 0-3 uh, early in the bot lane. We had teased this idea that uh, Biofrost told us the optic uh, bot lane arrow and big. He thought was pretty incredible or had been showing up quite incredibly in scrims. We hadn't necessarily seen that dominance on stage. Uh, but up against the best bot lane in North America, Double F Core JJ, man, they st they stacked up. So I wanted the bottom lane for Optic to be very aggressive this time around to contrast the first time these two teams met in summer where they ran Ezreal, Tom Kent. It was just not what you wanted to see. And so when you run the Draven and Nautilus against the Lucian Yumi, you know it's going to be Operation Camp, the bottom lane. And it was just that. Yeah, and I think the big problem here for me is uh, how Core JJ kind of played this all in. I love the bot lane out of Optic. I love the aggression. You're forcing fights, but you saw Core JJ really greed out and he wanted to go for the interrupt on the Nautilus hook and he popped off too soon and got hit by the alt as well. So he's knocked up in the air. He could have just started alting first before going for the pop-off play. He wants to try and disengage the situation without needing to do that. He greeds it out, gets knocked up, gets hooked. They're already almost killed double if by the time he starts alting, as well as the fact Crown already has an inside track, means that this would have been a hard play to get out of to begin with, showing that Optic is playing really well. Uh, and they were able to abuse TL's bot lane. And that was kind of the kickoff point because that's all summoners down the bot lane. And now it's, it's open business, you know, keep going down there and exploit TL's strongest part of the map and really set them behind. Which is crazy in the light of everything we talked about with TL's early game and where Eric Smithy does put his focus. Yes, we had talked about oh, the fact no. that his overall jungle proximity to his laners was not necessarily the highest in the league, but that the lane that he would most often help out is that bot lane. Optic says in the face of that, we're going to target the bot lane anyway. It is your strongest point, and we're going to look to turn things around there. You can do that because of the matchups that they got in their solo lanes. There's just no chance that the Gragas and the Aatrox have a way to kill Poppy in the top lane. So no matter what Xmithy does up there, it's not going to yield the same results. And then the mid lane, Corky's just so safe. So Xmithy's job really was only in the bottom lane, but it's kind of telegraphed because of how difficult it is to gank the solo laners. And as a result, you have Meteos that he gets the first jump, and once you start snowballing that matchup, you just don't want to go to the Draven lane again because he's got a huge item advantage, a BF sword already that if you misstep, he's going to lifesteal back against whatever you throw his way. And while you can't quite abuse the poppy like you can the, the Yumi and, and Lucian lane, you can still set it really far behind it. Impact did a great job smashing that lane, forcing flashes in 1v1 situations multiple times. Smithy did the right thing, like you said, sacking bot lane, can't turn that around. They still got the Rift Herald and dropped it top to get Aatrox further ahead. And... That was eventually their path back in the game. Impact right. was the guy who actually won this game for TL. Yeah, Optic would grab an ace in mid lane and then take it to a rather, I guess, red side jungle here and then take it over to a Baron to give them a sweet lead. What seemed insurmountable, TL will find their way back in, as mentioned, off the back. Doklo was the big hero. Yeah. And then you look at Xmithy's ultimate on the backside, but there was no side of there. So there was no way for Yasu to be able to come up on that play. And to get a 5 for 0, you think that the game is just going to be over at this point, but Team Liquid is... Here it is. No Corky. Ever. He's stuck split pushing bot lane right yeah, now. Yeah, this, this is the huge, huge mistake they're making. They're fighting a 4v5, and even though you're stronger, and even though, you know, oh my god, look at Impact, he's this bait, you don't have the Corky there the whole time. But that is a crap. They had the mistake. same confidence, though, because it was... Dokla flashing onto Aatrox, slamming him in, thinking, okay, it's the same replay of the first fight, just without the carry. Yeah, and I mean, this time around, they don't have any healing reduction for the Aatrox, and so Impact, despite getting 1v2, Lifesteal tanks all that quirky damage. I was gonna say, don't need a revive <laughs> if you just Lifesteal it all back up. Yeah, those a Aatrox buffs on the healing from the ultimate went up, and that's really what he used right there to stay alive. He mm -hmm. still had a GA, even if they did get through it, but they didn't, and that bought enough time for the rest of the team to collapse, and so... Impact, yeah, player of the game. Player of the game, those stats are incredible. Again, we had already shown the arrow ones. That 15-minute mark, as Kobe mentioned, really showcased a lopsided map. For TL, it was all about playing through impact. For the side of Optic, it would be playing around their 280 carries because, yes, Crown was a threat, as Double Wolf mentioned. Uh, but... I think at the end of the day, while an 8-0 historical record against TL is going to sting, again, in the waning weeks of this summer split, and when we talk about that race for playoffs and ultimately the road to Detroit, 
how is this Optic team feeling, even in the sting of a I loss? I think this one stings more than any other loss. You had it. You had it. You did. This it. was their game right there. We showed the moment where they threw it. It gives you the confidence to know that you can at least body the bottom lane of the best team in the NA right yeah. now. So it should give them the confidence after they cool off a bit. But I think that they're going to be really candid on the way back and watching that VOD review because... You had the opportunity to topple the record, to get further in the standings, to maybe even approach a potential clinch for a buy. That's still in the running for Optic, and now, maybe not so much. In the immediate, it will sting. The darts, they almost had it. But ultimately, Team Liquid reigns supreme. On the other side, FlyQuest loads onto the Rift, opposite Cloud9, so don't go anywhere. Double's gonna be taken down very low. Here comes the package delivery system! Crowd's got him! And Core JJ's oh, on the win! Crowd trying to find one more attack. I'm oh, walking up. Uses I'm no. flashing in. No, no dash, no dash. Give it, give it to me. Nice. Good job. Package delivery is down. Double is in some trouble over the wall goes Medios, and there's your loot pinata with it. Dopa going in, looking to start the fight off over the Team Liquid Big Boy. And they've got him already! Jensen's in some trouble and Smith, he's already dead! Trigger pull! They can eat, okay? Yeah. Hit me? Hit me? Hit me? Hit me? I'm gonna ulti it back, 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 back. Nice, 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 nice. nice. Okay, go, go, go. He tries to escape the barrel, but he's shut down. And impact! You cannot say anyone had more of an impact on this game. Congrats, Kim. You got your own car with your own insurance. No more driving that old hand me down. Did you trade it in? My parents handed it down to my little brother. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Surprise! Surprise! No. Not beige Betty. You, you, got, you guys can't do this to me, seriously? My car is like a rite of passage. How do you expect me to drive this? Just turn the key and yeah, it's just... Uh, Some of this? It's automatic, dual cup what? holders. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm.